What's going on guys, Bank Rubber Games here with Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 which is a game I've been waiting to play for a very long time. I was instantly excited at the announcement of a sequel of the first game. Uh, so yeah, really can't wait to get into it and everything I've seen before release has uh, been really really cool and everyone that's been able to play the game early has said they've really enjoyed their time with it. So really excited to get uh, going with this one couple of things before we start um, if you haven't played or seen the first Space Marine I do have a playthrough of it up on the channel so I recommend you guys check that out if you haven't seen it and if you're not into the Warhammer universe or the 40k universe I'd recommend looking up a series called Astartes on YouTube um, the original upload was taken down because the person that made it was um, acquired by sort of Games Workshop the company behind Warhammer 40,000 but there are versions of it still up on on YouTube and I'll uh, see if I can link one down in the description below for you guys uh, just because it really uh, sort of sets the tone of the Warhammer 40,000 universe something else to point out is I have played the first sort of introduction of the game just to make sure everything's running okay and uh, make sure performance is uh, where I want it to be for you guys I'm not quite playing it with maxed out settings but it's very very close and um, there's a couple of things turned down a little bit and um, that's just to help uh, keep performance a little bit more stable but immediately um, yeah I can tell this is going to be a good one guys I'm definitely going to enjoy it uh, enjoy it and I really hope you guys stay along for the ride and enjoy it with me I'm just going to start a new game that's uh give you access to the settings here before starting a new game which is nice then on the difficulty screen really really cool the back to the very hard difficulty is called angel of death along with the uh, artwork there for each of the difficulties really really cool and it does say that playing on veteran or hard is set up as the intended experience and um, as much as i enjoy playing games as they're intended to be made i do think after playing the introduction that i'm going to stick with the normal difficulty because it still offers a really good challenge uh, similar to the first game you are very very powerful but you can very easily get overwhelmed and um, you, know, you, you can't you can't mess around you have to uh, really think about what you're doing still so I think we're going to stick with normal if I'm finding it a bit easier at any point I will switch over to veteran and uh, see how that plays out
really like that intro. Very similar to the first game. Check. Repeat. Kill team leader to squad. Confirm Vox contact. We have crashed. It's from your position. Do you have the virus bomb? Damn it. Moving to. Lost contact with brother. Orbital launcher facility. Well secured. Hellstroth, hold fast. I'm moving to the crash site. Do you read? Any sign of the commander? Negative. No contact since the crash. I'm here, damn it. Hellstroth, you have command. What are your orders? We proceed as planned. Launch the virus bomb into the stratosphere. Detonate it. Watch the Tyranids die. The sight I will greatly enjoy. Transmitter must be broken. It's mad seeing this many enemies on screen. There is that objective screen there as well, that points it out. Gives you a nice bit of information, points you in the direction you need to go. Yeah, even that intro cutscene comes across very similar to the Astartes fan-made film. I wonder if there was any involvement from him, you know, the guy that made it in the start of this game. Home against the area will be crawling with them. And everywhere, you know, there's like loads of details. These guys go down pretty easy in small groups, but they can overwhelm you very easily. And uh, yeah, we've got armor and health, and they're similar to like a very similar system to Bloodborne. You can regain some of your health back as long as you're within that white bar. And even though we're basically a walking tank, you still need to be careful. So similar to the first game, you have light and heavy attacks. The heavy attacks are better at stunning targets and dealing uh, area damage. And um, yeah, it's a very similar combo system to the first game. But it's just performed a little bit differently. I'm up to my elbows in these wretched bonds. Any word from Brother Darius or the commander? Nothing. It is left to us to share the glory now, Kelstras. Hold on, brothers. Yeah, armor's already gone down. And now we can parry enemies. 
And the indicator doesn't always come up. It's um, just uh, mainly when the bigger and larger enemies attack, you get the indicator. But as you can see there, it basically, if you, with the systems in the game, if you play well, you basically shouldn't take any real damage uh, or any health damage at least. Seems really well balanced so far. Now they send larger meat to stop me. So along with attacks we can parry, there's unparryable attacks. And we can also lock on to uh, the sort of larger targets. And um this guy, he does actually have some combos that the indicator doesn't necessarily come up for the whole thing. Um, it only comes up for part of it. Um, for both the unparryable attacks and uh, parryable attacks. Basically, the same as the first game, or like something out of Doom, enemies can enter a staggered state, and you can take them out to restore some of your armor. Arthur, you must reach that bomb. I will, even if I have to chew my way through. Have stunned Hawk there. Nice little background details. It wasn't the small, the smoothest takedown there. I'm sure as we go, we'll get better. <gasps> no wrecked vehicles. Darius. Brother. I will repay them ten souls. This bolter will roar in your name, Darius. I swear on it. Come for me! So we can uh, pull out our gun very quickly to do massive amount of damage or even take out some of the smaller enemies. Very cool system. It's very similar to something like out Callisto Protocol, but I think it's executed a little bit better here. A little bit more cinematic. The launcher is still standing when I get there. Hold the line for as long as I can. We're not going to do it too much here, but it's something we're going to be making use of throughout the game. Come <laughs> on. 
can fire your real weapons without aiming in. No, it's not very accurate. Kill team, I am at the crash site. If you can hear me, I have the virus bomb. Head into the orbital launcher. Is that as hard as your bite, Sinos? Come on! Not the smoothest takedown. A bit better. Well, if you have bigger enemies like that, surrounded by smaller en enemies, if you take out the bigger enemy, it will either take out or stun the smaller enemies in a small radius around it. Tyranids have breached the perimeter. Offer. Anyone? Is the bomb on route? Hang on, Kelstros. Guys aren't a threat to us now. Check from that one that was hiding in the background. Hellstrus, are you with me? I have the bomb. You have served your emperor well, brother. Record log. To any Imperial unit that recovers this log, my kill team crash landed off course. My brothers are all dead. Slain by tyrannies. I have the virus bomb. Moving to the orbital launch. We'll fire into stratosphere where it will disperse over tyranny positions. So the bolt is a lot more powerful and obviously you can fire much faster but it has got a lot more recoil and it's as accurate as the bolt pistol. Slightly longer reload as well.
is our one chance to delay the Tyranid invasion. The virus will spread through their forces. They will adapt, but it will slow them down. The virus must be launched into the stratosphere. Nothing else matters. This poor guardsman didn't stand a chance. Something to point out is there quite, is quite a lot of aim assist with your uh, weapons. But I don't actually mind it. I think it just makes things um, easier to play sort of smoothly and have a more enjoyable experience experience with it. Definitely didn't go as well as it did the first time. But it does show how very how easy it is to Operator get overwhelmed. Your tardiness has been flagged for invigilation. Open the gates. Shift chronometer reset. You are registered as on duty. Carry out the officer's order according to the divine synchronicity. Searching payload. Nice little reference to the first game when you loaded a big shell like this by hand. Payload chambered. Hazardous material detected. Further benedictions required. Transmitting override authorization. Set course for stratospheric detonation. The rite of safeguard must be performed. Seek an authorized Magos at the command console. And here we do have some frag grenades. Uh, yeah, definitely useful. Machine Spirit, where is the command console? On the observation platform above. The Magos on duty does not respond. If you hold the circle button, you do get a nice indicator as well. Summon the lift. They're on a very short fuse once they land. Considering it's just like a tutorial mission and the introduction to the game is actually quite long, so this will be a slightly longer episode. I haven't played past that, so we'll have to see what the other missions are like. Spirit, what is the status of the orbital launcher? Hibernation. Console inactive for 22 hours. This impiety to the Omnissiah has been locked. Activate launch systems. The rite of initialization must be performed. Seek an authorized Magos at the command console. Console is posted at the edge of the observation 
love the environmental detail. I have a feeling this is a game you can just stand around and stare at for a very long time, even if you're not necessarily into 40k. Still just looks awesome. This was a really cool reveal, that is Titus from the first game. And um, yeah, it's really cool because when the sequel was originally planned, he was going to be part of the Death Watch. I will take you all with me. So it's nice that they sort of stuck to what the uh, original plan for the sequel was. Take your 
kind from the galaxy. But yeah, really cool tutorial for the game. Like I said, there's that re reveal that we were playing as Tartus all along. Uh, very cool. And that he's part of the Death Watch, which is what they were originally going to do for the sequel. So like I said, it's nice that they've sort of stayed true to that. Um, and this is sort of where I got to before. I haven't played past this point. A couple of encounters there didn't go as smoothly as I'd like, but I'm sure we'll get the hang of things a bit better and uh, yeah, really be able to show off um, you know, how cool this game can be. Another brilliant feature, you can pause cutscenes and you can skip them as well, which is great. Um, yeah, on repeated playthroughs. But looking at how long this episode has been and seeing as I haven't played past this point myself, I think here's a good place to wrap this first episode up. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and been enjoying, well, and look forward to the rest of the series. I really can't wait to get through this game, even from just playing that tutorial a couple of times. Um, yeah, I can really tell it's going to be one that I... I really enjoy and I hope like I said at the start of the episode I hope you guys enjoy it with me so if you are looking forward to the rest of the series and like what you've seen so far make sure to like and subscribe that way you don't miss out on anything but thanks again for watching I always appreciate having you guys here and I'll catch you guys in the next episode